I'm talking about young shakes. I want to represent Jesse James. And this is for my city. Hey, hey, I do it for my city. Rice Fame Group, and today's chat with HBCU champion features head coach now Legania from Dillard University. His men and women won the Gulf Coast Athletic Conference cross country and track and field championships this year. So we're glad to have Coach Legania here. And I want to start off by saying congratulations, Coach, on your accomplishment. Nah, thank you, Mr. Lacey. I appreciate it, and I appreciate being here. Okay, okay. Well, please tell us a bit about yourself, um, your 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 background, and and then uh, you know your coaching career. Yeah. So I'm born and raised in New Orleans. I'm a New Orleans baby. Um, been here. Seemed like forever, right? Um, I moved away for a little while and ultimately came back. Uh, when I came back, I bumped into an ex that is now my wife of 11 years. <laughs> uh, we got two kids and we still stay in the city. Um, I graduated from Etna Car High School and that's where I started my track and field coaching career. Um, I coached over there for 10 seasons. We won six for state runner up and a few New Balance All Americans along the way. And fast forward here, and now I'm at Dillard, you know, looking to do the exact same thing and have the same success that I've had on the high school and the club level. Okay. Okay. So uh, exactly how long have you been there at Dillard? Um, I'm headed into season three. So I, I've completed two seasons, um, and it, it just feel like it's home for me. Um, it's a 10 minute drive from my house. <laughs> you know, like the track that we practice at, I've ran it as a kid. So, you know, it is, it's good to feel, you know, like you're at home and you're competing for your house. Okay, okay. So um, where'd, you, um, where'd you go to college? I went to college at Delta State uh, University in Cleveland, Mississippi. Um, that's where I got my undergrad and I got my master's from Capella University. But um, coming from the city, you know, as people like to call it, going into Cleveland, Mississippi, this is a time of early 2000s where the only thing they had was the regular Walmart. They didn't even have a super Walmart. And that was different for me, you know, uh, seeing cows and things like that. So you got to kind of adjust uh, fairly quickly. Um, but it was an experience I, you know, I wouldn't give up for the world because that's part of my journey. And, you know, I still have really good friends from that journey to this day. Okay. So um, were you living in, in New Orleans at the time of the uh, hurricane? No. So I was actually in college. Um, and the, the biggest, the craziest part about that is I was playing football at, at Delta State and we was on the road. So, and at that time, it's not a, like a real cell phone driven society that we was living in. You had to still use phone cards or, you know, things like that. So I couldn't get in touch with anybody you know, until we got back in town. And when we got back, I had like 30 family members <laughs> at the doorstep, like, all right, we coming here. So they stayed um, in Mississippi for, who I'm going to say close to a year. Um, and then they slowly started moving back to the city. Um, but the side, the side of the river that we stay on is the West Bank, and we didn't have that much damage as far as water and everything. We just had wind damage. So they was kind of able to get back a little bit earlier, you know, than most people in the city. Okay. Okay. Well, thank God for that. Yeah. That's definitely. Yeah, that that almost seemed it almost sounded like that episode of the boondocks when uh yeah. when granddad's <laughs> relatives came up. Yeah. But I, I know yeah. it wasn't that crazy though. <laughs> and we had I had three other roommates. We had a a fourplex and two of them was from New Orleans. And they family was there. So <laughs> we had a lot of people in our apartment, man, but the cooking was good. Like the cooking became serious when everybody came into town. So, you know, we just had fun with it. Okay. So so you didn't get a chance to get homesick around that particular time. Nah, everybody was there. Like everybody, everybody was there. So that was pretty cool, man. 
Okay. Well, like I said, thank God that um, things weren't worse um, for your family and, and that, you know, you were able to make everything work out. I appreciate so, that. So, so you um, evidently took over the program there at Dillard during this pandemic, uh, uh, <laughs> during this pandemic stretch. So how, yeah. how has that experience been, um, being, a, being a coach transitioning from high school to the collegiate level during the pandemic? So we, so I have a summer track club and we was shockingly, we was able to get two or three track meets in over the summer. So you got to see kind of how to maneuver in the, the spike of COVID. Um, everything just had to be on point when you did move. Um, so when I came in a dealer, mass mandatory, doing every training, um, we still were social distancing. We had probably about eight training sessions because you only can have so many people in a training group. Um, the kids didn't party. Um, if they had like a little kickback or something, they had to be with like team only. Um, we was one of the teams fortunate enough at Dillard to not have an outbreak. Um, so we didn't have to shut down at any point and we was able to complete our season. And that's because our kids wanted to have a season. And I kind of explained to them, like, if there's something that you want, then we have to, you know, we have to move the way that we need to move so we can be protected. And they did a great job, man. Um, it wasn't me. It was the kids, you know, because at the end of the day, they're still young adults and they still can do whatever they want to do. Um, you know, so I, I commend them for a job well done of us getting through that season. Okay. Okay. So how has that transition been? What what were some of the things that contributed to your learning curve? It was easy. Um, so I worked um as a PE teacher for eight years at a um a charter school here in New Orleans and the way that principle structured things, everything was through Google, right? Google Drive, everything. So I got to see for eight years, I got to see how you prepare, how you organize, and how you do things like, you know, that, take inventory. So I got a chance to, you know, take over part of the athletic department at the middle school I was at, and I was able to kind of see how you order stuff. So when I came into Dillard, I just slid everything that I learned on the administrative side, you know, because you don't know if you're going to get an assistant coach in in the spike of COVID, right? You don't know. So I just slid everything over and then it worked. Um, and I didn't get a coach until the second year. So, you know, you're doing everything by yourself. I did have my assistant coach, Coach Brandon, who coached with me at um, at, at, at the car and for the summer program. But, you know, he only could volunteer because he still had to take care of his family and things like that. So, you know, you really just hands in and everything. And it was it wasn't hard. I don't make it sound like it was like this seamless thing, you know, because you do have challenges. But like for the most part, when it came to the overall shell of everything, I think everything was pretty much tight. OK, OK. So as far as recruiting, uh, what's your recruiting range? Um, are, are you? Are you uh, like local and regional? Or are you national? Or are you international? I go after what I like. Um, so international, U.S. kids are from east, like the whole thing, east to west. Um, but the relationship have to work. Um, so I've recruited kids that that could probably came in and won a national championship season one. But the relationship has to work between us two. You have to. I'm looking for a certain work ethic. Um, I'm looking for a kid that's looking to do certain things in the classroom um, because you can't be ineligible competing. So, you know, I'm looking for those things. So it's, for me, it's more relationship building. Um, but any kid, we take any kid, man. Um, you don't have to be great. You can be great. Um, we're willing to work with you and, you know, be, be competitive, you know, on a circuit that we are in. Okay. So, well, before I forget to ask this, I might as well ask it now. Um, have you been able to take advantage of the NCAA transfer portal? So, yes and no, right? So the kids that want to come to deal it, they're my kids that I had on on the high school level, right? So I don't I don't look at I don't look at it as in I'm going out seeking other people's children. These are just my kids trying to come back home. A lot of times I tell them no. Um, me personally, my personal, I'm not a fan of the transfer portal. Um, it is out. 
it's a is an easier way when something get hard to say I'm out, I quit. Um, that's to me, that's what that is to me. Um, so if you jump in the transfer portal, I'm gonna ask you why you left. Um, you're gonna always blame everyone else for the reason that you're leaving. So I, I try to stay away from it. Um, I try to go after JUCO transfers um, or just high school kids, you know, or, or a lot of times kids on the NAI level that's looking to come closer to home. Um, something like that, but just you and the transfer reporter, I don't even know how to log into it. <laughs> so I don't even look at it. And I'm not even lying to you. Okay. Okay. So uh, reading from your um... – from your bio and, and everything and, and from the information I'm given by Dillard. Uh, this was your first, this, this year was your first year with the championship. What, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. Was this the first year that the, uh, the GC AC went back to having like a full season with the championships during the pandemic? So 2020, 2021, we had a season. Um, we had we had all our championships. Um, the women cross country, we didn't have a full team, you know, for obvious reasons because of COVID. Um, so we did okay in cross country when it came to the track season. We got a lot of those kids back, you know, in the in the spring. Um, so we was able to win the men's championship on outdoors, and the women's was runner up to Xavier. And in that season, I got men's coach of the year, which was pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's always a nice thing to to, to yeah, get you know. is uh, besides the team accolades, getting those individual accolades as well. So, so essentially, um, your two years, you won the men's side of um, track and field twice. Yes. Okay. Well, congratulations on that too. <laughs> Thank <job>. you. <laughs> No, it's not. It's not me, man. The kids work. They work, um, and you can see their progression. We, like I always say, as a coach, you got the easiest job. You just have to keep them healthy, and make them stronger and faster. They, they have the part where they have to go to sleep, go to class, five o'clock training. Like they have the hard part of it. Um, so when I recruit, I go after those kids. I let you know ahead of time that this is what it is, and a lot of them be like, "I'm with it," and they come in and. They pick up, you know, a lot of times where we left off the previous season because you still have a lot of those kids that that know the team culture that's still on the team. Mm -hmm. So when you say five o'clock, you talking about five o'clock in the evening or five o'clock in the morning? Five, five a.m. in the morning. Okay, and that's right. and that's our all. So that's our off season um, training. So in mm -hmm. the off season, like to me, the fall is the biggest part of the academic year, right? You have to start off on fire. Um, so three times a week we go 5 a.m. and then we go a little bit later to Tuesday and Thursday. And a lot of times we give them Friday off. Um, you know, kid might want to go home, kid might want to sleep in, because a lot of them don't have class on Friday. So it's 5 a.m. and I don't want to see you again, right? Like go take care of class, go be a student, hang on the yard, go do all those things that, you know, you're here to do. So when it's time for track season, we locked in. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I guess too that that kind of gets their bodies acclimated to you know when you have to go to those championships or you know you have to you have to travel. Let's say you're on Central Time and you have to go mm -hmm. to Eastern Time, and they have early start times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got it. You have to get adjusted one way or another. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Tell us a, a bit about your cross country season this year. Um, this past season, twenty twenty one. Right. Um, yes. we got in. We got in the transfer. We had a group of kids that was there. Um, I think that could that mm -hmm. could have competed really high. Um, but a lot of the mm -hmm. parents was kind of nervous about the COVID, so the kid didn't you know didn't compete, which was fine with me. But we was able to get everybody back with i i think a dynamic transfer from meridian uh junior college joshan noel and when i when i recruited the kid i said there's something about this kid like he wasn't talking he's a quiet kid 
both parents parents was there supportive but i'm like the kids that you know you're not arrogant you're not but I mean, he had a thing about him that i am good and that and we just got to talking and i was like okay i like this kid so i offered them um it was he had a lot of schools after him um you know and and you know sometimes you think well, i can't get the kid because i'm building right i'm building the program you don't know if the kid want to take a chance on him but he took a chance man and he went lights out um he won the cross country championship he was the mvp of the cross country championships and the kids that we had Devontae williams and malik durant and those kids they fought when i say they follow suit they follow suit because he was a leader like he came in with it was a cross country captain he was on a roster probably two weeks and i was like yep that's the one and you know he we had a moment last year where a hurricane hit and we had to get away like everybody had to leave the city so we was in jackson mississippi um for like two and a half weeks with the, with the cross country team and we only had one cross country meet so we try to you know we kind of like how do you keep kids engaged when they know it's only one cross country meet and we're out here another week and a half like how do you keep them engage like how do you you know like because there's nothing to do it's a whole bunch of downtime and i don't mind is, is you know you know the rest so i was trying to figure out like how can you you know so what we did as a staff was we practiced early again 6 a.m <laughs> they went on they run at 6 a.m we got what we did was 6 a.m they had time to themselves we did lunch mm -hmm. and we did dinner together and the rest of the time you're like let's see all these kids mature enough to navigate on their own and shockingly man they did a real good job man in the hotel we was able to visit tougaloo college that's what we ate at they was able to engage with those kids they did a real good job i think representing themselves not only the university but themselves and their parents man and that was i was like we're probably gonna win it because there was there was locked in and i knew at that time it was only us in a conference that was having this issue where we couldn't compete you wasn't at your house my, my at the time I know what, what my wife name was because we had left and came back and left again like you know so you had to deal with that but they did a real good job man locking in and and i credit joe shine for leading that pack um on the girl side we had all our girls there um and they did the same thing to kind of follow his lead and and you fast forward we win a conference championship it was the first in school history for men and women um the kids don't understand what that means. You know, like when you say it to them, it's like, oh, okay, that's what's up. <laughs> okay. You know, like, but like I'm explaining to them, like, no, this is kind of a big deal because of all the 150 plus years Dylan has been around, this never been done. And it, then it was like, oh, they, it kind of hit them. So, um, you know, it, it was a lot this past fall. You deal with COVID, you're dealing with a hurricane, you know, you're dealing with the kids. We only got off season a week and a half of training. So when we started off season, we got going and then we had to leave. So you had kids back in California. You had kids, you know, they were just back all over the place. And you had no control over their environment. You had no no control over if there was eating. Like you had no control over anything. We were just in Jackson with the cross country team. Um, so I knew we was going again, we're the only team in our conference dealing with this. So I knew we would be behind, you know, a little bit when it came to like conditioning and everything. But, you know, we, we did pretty decent um, in the spring because we was able to have our first indoor season since like the 60s. <laughs> um, so Dr. Bones was able to give us an indoor season and we did pretty decent. And I think that set us up, you know, for outdoors. Okay. Okay. Well, that, that that's great. Uh, and I, I guess I've never thought about this until now, um, interviewing a coach from a, a, a metropolitan area or a major city. How do you host cross country meets? So we have an area that's tag armly. Um, we have we have a lot of grassy areas. So it's not your traditional running through the woods. You know, you have like, yeah, you do have hills and you do have grass areas. So like a lot of schools just get creative with paving out the, the path. Um, and it is different than like a few of the schools are in Arkansas. You have the hills and the woods. Like, and when we get to conference, that's like really our first time having to deal with hills. 
you know, and like I always tell the kids, like we can go run hills, you know, up and down, but it's not the same, you know, and they be prepared. Um, they walk the trail before we get, you know, to it so we can compete well. But now nah, down here, we carve out what we can carve out. <laughs> we, we run what we can run. And that's pretty much considered a cross country season. You know, the times to me, the times don't matter. Because at the end of the day, you still have to compete against each other. So you could be lights out all year, and then it don't matter that day. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, because cause it, it, when it comes to the actual meet, it's all about place. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Who, who, wanted, who wanted more? Mm-hmm. And are you strategic, strategic enough to maneuver the way you need to maneuver? Can you hold your position? A lot of stuff going to it is normally raining. It's normally cold when we run the championship. So all that plays into a factor. Do a kid has asthma. Now you have asthma. You're fine when the weather is warm. Now it's cold. And, you know, now you're running three minutes slower. Like, it's all those things that that come into play. But I love the sport, man. And it's competitive. Well, I've officiated quite a few um, national championships and and, uh, regional championships and things like that. and. so I know I, I I've been out there in the snow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see, you know, up here up here in uh in Kentucky and 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 we have, like I said, some major meets in Louisville. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I have been out there in the snow, yeah, and in the mud, and uh even I think we had torrential rains one year. So uh, a lot of teams said, and I think that was a that was either NCAA D one or D two national championships, and these teams had these tents set up in this one area, and by the time we got out there for the actual meet, their tents were underwater. I'm talking about <laughs> only thing you can see is the top of the tent. Right, <laughs> right. So, so yeah, cross country is a different type of. Sport. Oh, no, it is. It is. It is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so, okay. So, who were um, who were your top cross country athletes this year? Besides, um, besides, Joshan, uh, yeah, Joshan Noel and Jalen Hoffman for our girls. For well, our women, okay. our women, our women. Okay. Okay. And so you said. So you say he just kind of he just came in and took over. That kid came in and took over, man. He um he did every everything you needed one person to do. He was the outdoors championship MVP. Um, he was on the four by four this year and uh, the outdoor national championship that was uh, all Americans. He was part of that. So he's a special kid, man, and and we got. I think two more special ones that I got coming in the fall. I'm not going to speak too much on it. Um, I'll let them come in and make a name for themselves. But I, we got a special group uh, cross country. Everyone came back. So everyone came back and we build on what we already had. So I think it should be another special year. You know, you still got to get out there and compete. Um, but, you know, looking at it, we should compete well. Okay. Okay. So – Let's transition then over to your outdoor season. Um, how how was that? Um, gr- better. Um, so if you talk to any of the kids, they're gonna say, eh, but we did win the men and women championships. But mm-hmm. we have as I tell my kids, we're not trying to win a conference championship, we're trying to win a national championship that's the goal is not to win the conference championship it's just not the goal if it happens we'll celebrate it and then we'll prepare for nationals so if you talk to any of the kids they're not going to say we had an outstanding season we was able to get nine all-americans between outdoors and indoors which is a big deal because i think that's more all-americans in two seasons well we had 13 in two seasons so we had 13 in two seasons we had four the first year that's more all-americans than the whole history of Dilla track and field. I think total they might have had 11 or 12 in the whole history. So that's fine. But again, we're not satisfied until one, we're either in the top four. Our goal last year was to be in the top four. We had some miscues at Outdoor Nationals, which is part of the sport. 
Um, but our, our goal last year was top four. Two years to win a national championship. Um, so that's, you know, winning conferences is, is great. is a great conference to represent. But our goal is nationally to be one of the better teams. We was ranked high as number five on the men's side and high as number 14 on the women's side. And every national ranking that came out, we was ranked on the men and women's side. Um, I think we have, I don't think, we have some of the best sprinters in the country, um, men and women's side. We're trying to build off that so we can go and win it. Um, we compete. We won the 4 by one Nationals in 2021. We should have repeated, but that's part of the sport. Uh, we was able to bring in a transfer, Jamal Morris, and he went crazy. He's a, he's about five feet, um, small, but that sucker can fly. He broke every school record in sprints except for the hundred meters. Cody Branch has the hundred meters, and he's coming back. So I get my whole team back. I got a couple of transfers coming in, um, and we looking to give it a run, man. We we looking, you know, to give it a run. We're going to compete well, hopefully in conference. Um, I brought in six guard hurdlers um, in a conference, which we we pretty much swept the hurdles. So we're going to be even, I think, stronger in that aspect. Those same girls can jump. Um, so we we trying to build something, man. But I'm not building it to win a conference championship. You know, like we we trying to we trying to get the big daddy. You know, and it's a great conference to compete in, and it's a competitive conference. Um, and you have a couple of teams coming in. Suno's coming back. We know Suno won the championship in '19. They'll be competitive. Wiley from Texas is coming in. They'll be competitive. I'm not sure if Oakwood has a track team or not. Um, but if they do, I'm sure they'll be a competitive. You don't go into somebody conference thinking that you're not going to win. It's, it's a point, you know, for you to make the move. Um, so like I told the kids when, when the announcement was made, you got to defend your house. And I'm sure for Chris at Philander saying the same thing, you know, and I'm sure all these other schools saying the same thing. Like you can't let these new teams come in and push you out your conference. Um, so we're going to just compete with whoever we compete with. Our schedule is going to be competitive like it was last year. We only did one NAIA meet. Every meet was Division I. Uh, we want to compete. We want to get pushed to the limits. Um, we also took a group of kids out there to pin relays. Um, and I think that experience got them right. You know, like you get to see the best of the best. And you're out here, so let's compete. So I think they got a chance to kind of see you know, what track and field on a national stage other than the NAIA really looked like. And we had fun doing it, man. So hopefully we'll go back next year. Um, they're still looking for a new AD. So hopefully, you know, they, they'll allow me to continue to do what I'm doing, you know, because it do cost. <laughs> it do cost. So hopefully they'll let me do what I'm doing. Okay. So how many um, how many scholarships are you allowed? Um, are you are you almost at your limit or so we're not fully funded um so you have to allow on you know academic aid and and all these things but that's been my pitch so my whole pitch is imagine what i can do if i'm fully funded we've already done a lot of things in two years not being fully funded using the first year i just used the kids that was there um, you know, so we trying to build on that. Um, you was able to move some money around. Some kids graduated, you know, and stuff like that. Um, but once we get fully funded, man, I, I think in no time we'll be nationally competitive um, within a year. Okay. Okay. So you you mentioned, you know, quite a few of the programs there in the conference and how strong it is. And of course, you know, the, 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 the old stalwart that was there, Xavier, went to the uh, Red River Athletic Conference. And they ended, like you said, uh, I guess you don't want to have you don't want to have the experience that the <laughs> that the that the Red River Conference Athletic yeah. Conference teams had having Xavier to come in and then beat up on everybody. Mm -hmm. We not have we not having it like we not and I mean you can come and swing we gonna swing back you know whatever the outcome is is gonna be the outcome but we definitely not gonna lay down because you have a, a reputation 
um, we building our own reputation. So whatever the, the outcome is, is the outcome, but we definitely going to fight back. Okay. Okay. So as far as the meets that you went to throughout the year, how well did your team do in those meets? We was top two in a lot of the Division One meets that we competed in. Um, we went out to Prairie View, and we didn't even run a lot of people, and we ended up finishing second in that meet. Um, a, a lot of the meets, we was in the top three of total points. So when you can do that, and you know, like, you might be sitting out a kid this week or, you know, a kid injured, and you're still able to put up, put up big points, you kind of think that you can score high in the conference meet, which which we did, the men and women almost touched 300 points. So that, you know, again, our goal was 250. So both was able to exceed that. But we did well, man. We competed. Uh, the, the biggest thing when we go into those big meets is you, you're going to you're gonna get punched in the mouth. Let's see how we can respond. Let's look at the footage. Let's see where we can get better. And a, a lot of times, every time we was able to get better, and most importantly, they went out and they competed. Like, it didn't matter what you had on your uniform, we wanted to compete against you. And a lot of times we won in those sprint events, like a, a lot more than we lost. So, you know, we just trying to build the back end of it, get our jumps together and we'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. Wow. So, um, now overall, and this is one thing that I, that I tell people all the time, um, you know, I, I did coach on the collegiate level briefly. And uh, I I went after every top, you know, sprinter. I, I was a sprints coach. I went right. after every top sprinter, every rising senior in the country. And uh, that, that, you know, if you weren't, if you weren't in that, what was it? I think it was the gold and the silver standard. Mm-hmm. You know, and I really wasn't going after you. You had to be in the gold or the silver standard. So I went after I, every one of those. I remember people. that. <laughs> <laughs> I and remember the I, standard on mouse split. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. And, and then I would go after the second group was always the regional group. And mm-hmm. then the third group was the state group. And yep. Because at that particular time, Kentucky really didn't have a lot of the top kids in the country. You know, we might have one, you know, and 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 certain events, you know. But you know, overall, we we weren't that strong. We definitely weren't as strong as, as Kentucky is now, right. um, as a state. But um, yeah. So I had kids. And I'm just gonna put this out there. I was I was coaching at D3, and so when I it came to, to recruiting the Kentucky kids, I'm recruiting guys that are running 11 flat, 11 one in the hundred. Mm-hmm. And when I call them, they're telling me they're going to walk on the University of Kentucky. And so first thing I'm asking them is, um, well, did you talk to coach? Right. To find out if he's even gonna let you <laughs> try out for his team because you know, you run an eleven, you know, it's not like it's not like high school where you're there for, you know, anywhere between eight to to to, to four years or what or whatnot, and you mm-hmm. can develop. They want right. you already already developed at a certain point so that you can come in and compete and contribute. Right. And, and so, you know, 11, that's not going to get you anything in the SEC. Mm-hmm. And, and so, you know, and, and the point that I made to all of them, and I learned part of this from Coach George Williams at, at um, when he was at St. Ogg. If you fast, you fast. It doesn't matter what division you're running in if you fast you fast if your aspirations are to go pro they will find you right you commonly the jet approved that mm-hmm. and so 
and and I have some I have some other friends who you know have competed at the Olympic trials who were D three you know national champions, and so you know if you're good if you if you can throw you can throw, if you can run you can run, if you can if you can jump you can jump. So you know what what does it really matter? The the, the big thing is the fit, and it, so how do you pitch? you know, things to, to, to prospective athletes, especially if they're the type that think that they, you know, just have to go D1. So I always pull up our NAIA national championship. Um, the winning time was 20.2. We're, we're NAIA and the, the eight place was like 21. Oh, we're NAIA. You're a high school kid running 22, three as a senior. So you wouldn't even make the standard for the NAIA. I got, I, like, I got to tell a lot of them, go to our t Furrows account and go look at our kids. If you think this is a joke and you think that you deserve a full scholarship, you have to show me and prove to me why I should give you all my money because I ain't got none, right? You got to, you have to prove this to me. And they go to our accounts and we got 20 point kids. We got 47 low kids. We got 10, three kids. And then you don't hear from them again. So my whole thing is, if you're a kid and you're 11, 1, 11, 2 kids, we had James Pennington. He used to be, he's he a junior now, and at Dillard. He came in freshman year, 11, 3. 11, 3, 22, 9, or something like that. He ended his freshman year, 10, 7, 21, 6. So, but he was a workhorse. Like, so if you're a kid and you're disciplined, you eat right and you sleep right, and, you know, you're on time, all these things matter, and he worked hard, he ain't that freshman anchored my four by one at one national that year. So I don't care what your time is. Um, and we can sit down, we can come up with a, a figure that makes sense for both of us, you know, for where it's the least amount of money I have to come out of pocket, and there's the least amount of money you have to come out of pocket, then we can work it. Um, and we'll see where it goes from there. And you will have those stallions to train with, um, to get better, to get faster, to ask questions about you know, to ask about the workouts, to understand it better from them, because, you know, you learn better from your peer than a coach anyway. Um, so that's how I operate when it comes to, like, those kids. You do have, you do have kids, and you'd be like, well, if I go after this kid, will they come to an NAI school? Um, I've had 10 two kids reach out to me coming out of high school, and I'm like, oh, you're not coming here. Like, you just want an offer to put on your, your, your jacket to say this school offer me. And I don't just make offers for the sake of making offers. It has to make sense for me. Um, and with my scholarships is first come, first serve. So you can be a 10-2 kid, but that 11-3 kid already got the money. So, um, and I'm going to work with that 11-3 kid. So, you know, we, we not, now I do have a sales pitch, right? At first it was just like, come to Dillard. We're in New Orleans. You'll love it. Like, <laughs> like you'll love it, you know. But now, you know, we've done some winning. Um, you know, we won a little bit. Uh, we got some coach of the year honors, uh, you know, things like that. So you can pitch it a little bit better. You do have, we was top five in every sprint category. So you can sell that, you know, things like that. But, you know, like kids want, they want the world. Um, but again, you have to be able to perform like you've given the world. So yeah, that, that, that's an interesting thing. I'm still learning. Um, the recruiting side, I've gotten way better with it when I first came in. It's like, I want you, 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 and you. Yeah, but wait a minute. You're only going to get two of these kids. So let's narrow it down to somebody that makes sense for the program and I make sense for them as a coach. So, you know, we're still working that out, man. When we get more money, we're going to get us a, some some international kids up in here because they be reaching out, um, but, you know, they, they cost a pretty penny. So, you know, we're going to hold off right now. Well, I know I, I was fortunate enough when I uh, transitioned from high school, well, from high school and middle school over to college, um, I had talked to a Hall of Fame D1 coach at one of our major uh, D1s here in Kentucky mm -hmm. and uh, asked him about, you know, coming on as a volunteer coach. And, uh, and so he told me what I needed to do. I made it happen, was on his staff for a year, learned a lot yeah and and that recruiting piece was 
very, very much eye opening for me. Yeah. Um, because I, you know, he told me a story and it was so funny. <laughs> he told me a story about a, a coach. Um, and, and, you know, I wouldn't even mention the name, even if he had told me the name, but he said a coach from one part of Kentucky was upset with him because he didn't recruit that other coach's girl. Hmm. The girl was like a four, she was a four time regional champion and all this, that, and the other. And, but when coach, when the college coach asked what her time was, it was like a 101 mm-hmm. and a four. Yeah. And so coach said he had to be real with the guy. It was like, you know, we're recruiting, we're recruiting girls that run 55 and below. Right. <laughs> so, so, you know, and so just actually just from him telling me that um, I was able to I was able to present at uh, a few track and field um, coaches clinics and recruiting was a, a part of a presentation that I was able to give. And I was able to tell some of the coaches about things like that, that, hey, you know, a lot of these schools, especially when you're talking about these major schools, they have standards. And that was one of the things I learned. Uh, there was a full scholarship standard. There was a partial scholarship standard. Mm-hmm. And there was a walk-on standard. And so, and and that helped me when I went to that D3, even though we don't give scholarship, we didn't give scholarships on D3 level that still helped me as far as setting my standards, my priorities and everything else. So, you know, I did have that particular advantage that I was in a college program, you know, under the tutelage of a hall of fame coach. And, and, and so, you know, I, I just, I can't imagine what it's like for you. uh, I, you know, being there, you know, coming directly from the high school and club um, area. I know some other coaches, that are in the same um, boat right now and they want to coach on the collegiate side. But the thing I tell them, learn, you need to learn the recruiting side. Mm-hmm. And, and because that's the part that'll make or break you. That's also the, the part that you get you in more trouble than anything else. Right. <laughs> so, so, uh, so uh, tell us, tell us some more about uh, your athletes. Um, for the outdoor season? Um, on the girl, so year one, my fastest girl, we 101.9. That was the fastest girl. And when I tell you that relay was 422, and I went out recruited, my fastest girl this year was 5501, and that was an indoors. Um, that's Cavell Bird. Um, she was one of those girls, man. She, I had her on my summer program. She's from a local uh, high school here, and she was definitely phenomenal, you know, the entire season. She went 55. She went 23. She went 11-8, but she hate the 100. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do sometimes. Um, she was a 400-meter indoor All-American, and she was a 200-meter outdoor All-American. And, you know, I, I just think, you know, she, she's a young lady. She's not that big um, <laughs> when it comes to stature, but I think she just kind of tanked out um towards the end of the season which we're going to do a better um situation next year making sure her reps and her mileage and everything is a little bit lower than it was this year um but she did really well man um we went from like 422 one year in the four by four to 354 the following season um and i think we'll be under 348 this year um we got some really good 300 hurdlers coming in um, from the Louisiana area, and I think they're going to help tremendously. And we get our four by four team back, along with the alternate. Um, so we'll be fine on the girl side. Uh, we had a transfer from Meridian JUCO that came in in January. She's one of my kids that's that was on my. She was the very first little girl that I bought to the Junior Olympics um, years ago. So she was a baby. And it's crazy how things come full circle, man. Um, she was like a three, four-time All Conference this year. 
Um, she made it to nationals. I think she she would do really, really well next year. She got faster as the season went. I think if we had three or four more track meets, she probably would have qualified for everything in nationals. Um, but she only came in at the halfway point. Uh, we have our super senior. She's coming back, Ryan Smith. Um, she's coming back for that COVID year. She qualified in the 4x1, the 4x4, and the 200 for nationals. We have our superstar. We call her uh, the Rose Show. Um, Rachel Rowe, she's our dynamic triple jumper, long jumper. Um, one of the girls got hurt in nationals. She jumped on the 4x4, and we ran the exact same time. I was like, chick, I did not know that you had this in you. But if you look at a body type, eh, you're a quarter horse. Um, so I hope she don't see this. She'll be running the 400 uh, this season. Um, but nah, she's really good, man. We have a lot. I think we have a lot of uh, young ladies that contribute to to the success that we we'll, that we do. Uh, Kaylin Turner, she's like our everything. Um, she's a nursing major. We just got a nursing program. So hopefully, I can get her back. Um, for that COVID year, and then maybe she can do grad assistant the second year, uh, you know, to make that make sense for her. But if you look at her profile, man, she does everything. We do not have the help in conference, but literally she do all the events. <laughs> she be exhausted, man. But, you know, on the girl side, you know, I think we'll do well. We got Dayla Young coming in. That's a three-time hurler. In high school, her coach just got inducted to the Louisiana Hall of Fame. He won like 80-something state championships. Um, so he's been there for a while. Uh, I'm not exaggerating. I'm, I'm serious. I, when we when we done with this, I'll send you a link to it, man. He literally just got inducted. Uh, we got Whitney Harris um, from Scotlandville. She's another hurdler. We got a transfer from Minnesota. We got Trinity Marshall, my little cousin from Atlanta. She had no choice. Um, she had no choice. You know, she came. <laughs> she come down for the summer and run run for my track club. So it just made sense. Um, we have one of my kids from high school. She is the 15-16 club championship national record holder in high jump at 5'10". Um, she was at Virginia Commonwealth over there, and she transferred in. So we have her. Um, when she's jumping already, we'll win nationals. So hopefully we just keep her healthy, and hopefully, you know, we're able to compete at a high level with her because she also does hurdles. Uh, we got a lot of girls, man. There's a lot of ladies on the men's side. Um, Jamal Morris Jr. and Cody Branch kind of spearhead everything. Um, Kayla McClendon is one of those guys, man. He get going, but it takes so long, man. He'll go 22-2, 22-3 all season, and then he'll wake up and say, Coach, I'm running today and run 21-2 and qualify for nationals. And it's the most confusing thing ever. Um, you know, if you do this all year, you'll be one of the country's best sprinters. But, you know, he, he has two more seasons with me. Um, that that four by one at one nationals that should have won nationals last year is all coming back, along with the alternate. Um, that four by four all American team is coming back. Uh Julian Williams, who, who's our jumper, he he's every year I've been there, he's qualified for nationals. We just we you know waiting for him to take that next step. You know, of being that all American, he he definitely has it in him. Um, Chris Watson, man, he was a walk on, and this kid is fun. Now, he we he was a walk on, like he was. I know more. He got the money. <laughs> um, he was a conference champion in high jump, and this is a kid that didn't do track in high school. He came to my office one day and was like, "Coach, I want to do track." I'm like, you know, like I'm looking on my split, looking for him. I'm like, I don't see him. I'm like, did you do track? He was like. Nah, but I can, I, I'm good, coach. I was like, well, what do you do? He was like, I don't know. So, so we was in cross country season. We tried him out at cross country. We were like, all right, that's definitely not your thing. And he wasn't a short sprinter. He was like, I want to jump. I want to do what Julian doing. And the kid ended up jumping like six, six in, in conference and was jumping six feet, five, 10 early in the season. Um, He just missed the national standard. He was a kid that, Hey, man, we need you on the 4 by 4 because this kid has run way too much, right? This kid got four events in nationals. And he was an All-American, man, in the 4 by 4 So that's one of them kids that I think that can probably run 47 in the 400. We just have to figure out his training because he does all three jumps. Um, so we got to figure out how we're going to get that conditioning for him. But, man, we got a lot of guys, man. Our throws group is, 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 is funny. Um, they compete really well. They, 
if I say out of 60 points in conference in the throws, we have about 48. Um, we won everything except the javelin. We finished second in that. And Noby Harris actually won the men's field event MVP. Um, so we was fortunate enough to sweep the field events, which was, you know, I, I, I like that way better than me winning MVP. Um, I don't do anything, you know, like the long nights and all that. That's cool. I don't do, I don't physically have to do anything at all. The, the workouts, we do them over the summer. It's for the whole year. So I'm coasting, you know, the majority of the year teaching technique, watching film. It's easy. Man, the kids put the work in, man, and and I know how hard it was for me to wake up, wake up early in the morning. See me, I'm up anyway, you know. So me rolling out of bed at four thirty to go to a five o'clock practice is extremely easy for me, you know. But the kids, man, they put the work in, so that was like pretty sweet. Uh, watching all four of your kids, man, just sweep the awards because Cavell Bird won the women's MVP, Rachel Rowe, our, our row show, um, she got the field MVP. She won every jump. <laughs> every every jump she wanted. Um, she qualified for nationals in two of those jumps that day. So she was just having her phenomenal um, day. She, she's one of them kids that coming out of high school, she just jumped and jumped and jumped. And I try to convince her, like, you know, running a little bit will help you down that runway. And she bought into it, man. And she had herself a phenomenal year. Joshan Noel won MVP. So that was pretty cool, man, watching your kids name get called for something that you know they earn. Okay. okay. Wow. Yeah, it sounds like you're loaded. It sounds like you, uh, you're pretty much putting the NAIA on notice. So that's the, that's the plan. <laughs> that 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 so I got I got a lot of close friends, man. Um, you know, that coach in the NAIA that when I was on a high school level that was recruiting my kids. So so it's funny, you know, being at the table with them, trying to beat them. <laughs> you know, like, like this is, you know, it's all love and everything, man. But you get to see on Twitter the tweets that they say. Like, I love it. Um, I love it. I use it as as board material. Um, look what this coach said about his team. What, what are we gonna do about it? You know, I don't, I don't post much about you know, we, we're the best in the country. Nah, we just post what we post. You know, but nah, it's a, it's a lot of teams that's really good, and a lot of times they are the standards. Like Indiana Tech, they're the standards. Southeastern, my guy Dotson out there in Lakeland, Florida, they are the standard. So, and even Life University in uh, Atlanta now, man, they popped them out of nowhere, man, and they are rolling. So that's the standard. So you want to be in that conversation, you know, every time they mention the NAIA and they mention those teams, you want to be in that conversation. And I think this year we did a really good job being in the topic of conversation when it came to certain events. Um, we're not there with everything yet, but, you know, in a couple of years, we'll be that, that complete team and able to compete, you know, higher than we already competing. Okay. Okay. Well, I won't ask you to divulge any of your, um, secret, your, any of your coaching secrets on, uh, getting your athletes to peak or anything like that. But what I will ask you is a very, is a very important topic these days, um, uh, more so than it had been um, at any other time that I can remember um, in athletics. Um, of course, you know, so Simone Biles brought the topic to the national, uh, well, brought to the international audience. And that's that topic of mental health and athlete safety. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I know of uh, a few athletes, actually, I know quite a few track and field athletes who have either attempted or completed suicides. Of course, you know, we've heard about cheerleaders. Uh, we've heard about uh, football play. We've heard about people in, in, in all various sports. So um, how do you deal with, uh, with, with uh, mental health in your athletes? Yeah, so that was something that one was new for me. Um, I, I grew up in '83, so I'm an 80, '80s baby, right? And I grew up in the '90s, and we didn't have the. It wasn't described as mental health, right? Like we didn't, you know, know what anxiety was and and these things. So this is something new that I have to learn when I got to Dillard, because on a high school level, it's fun. Them kids are having, you know, they're just having fun trying to get the scholarship. 
Now, on the other side of it, once you get the scholarship, is where your anxiety and everything kicks in. So a lot of things that we do, we have, we do have the people at the school, the counselors that they can talk to. Um, but a lot of kids will rather talk to their coach. Um, so a lot of I have an open door policy. They come and they talk, and you know, I actually have a friend of mine that that's a um a counselor, and she comes out twice a week and just watch our practice and, and just look for certain things there to kind of help us, you know catch it before anything can happen but a few of the things that that i do for the kids we don't practice on friday in the fall um i have it on a schedule and i use it as bait and i say you know if we go hard monday to thursday we off on friday but we don't practice on friday <laughs> um but the kids still haven't picked that up yet um throughout the season we give them days off like you they'll literally get a text early in the morning and be like we off today um take care of yourself go home um you know just focus on this today like we give them tasks um to do so they're just not out just doing nothing so when they off go do this today go talk to this person go to the library so we kind of keep them active mentally um so they're not just sitting in their room thinking um and then you have situations where it's it's not the track side of it it's not school it's home um so that that's a lot more conversation that's a lot more talking and that's a lot more of telling the kid let's let's use the track and field for the distraction right and when we get we leave out of here we'll pick it back up when we leave out you can't carry it 24 hours so that's one of the things we tell the kid if you can carry it for 12 cool but don't carry it for another 12. and and that 12 is really throughout the day school practice hanging with your friends, you know, like, like keep yourself busy, you know, and, and surround yourself with friends. Like, and like, I'm not a big fan of my kids having friends outside of track. It's kind of weird, right? Because you're with these people all day, every day. So these should be your friends. So, you know, you get a lot of times you see the track kids just hanging with the track kids and it looks a certain kind of way, but that's who you with. That's your roommate when you go on trips. So like, I always give the, especially the girls, a, a big sister so like my freshmen come in and have a big sister on a team already and they've been in communication this is somebody you talk to a lot of people don't like talking to coaches a lot of people don't like talking to adults but if i talk to my peer then it's easy and the peer knows to come and have that conversation with coach if it's something that's out of bounds right if it's just her venting about a boyfriend you know i don't need to know the information i would love to have it <laughs> you know but i don't need the information but you know we try to do something man where it's, it's a calm environment um i'm loud at practice coach brandon is loud coach lex is not as loud um but you know like a lot of times we're competitive it's competitive so like i tell them we have a, a gravel rocks before you get to the track and i always scream out whatever you're going through leave it in the rocks and you will see some of the kids just <sighs> like it's is that I want to have focusing on me um and I think that's that's a bigger that we did really well um this season I think with the mental health side we didn't have any any meltdowns or anything where you know it, it took away from what you were trying to do like a lot of times you can catch it you know you and, and being in it you know your kids you know the ones that that need the extra love and you know you know I don't coach jumps but if I know a jumper have anxiety or, or, you know, when it's not going right, they may have a moment. Then I go get the kid and talk to the kid before you can get to it. The first season, you don't know the kids yet. So you got to kind of sit back and you got to kind of let things unfold. But then it's too late. Right. But now you get to season two. I know the kids, you know, I know, I know the questions to ask when I'm interviewing the kids when they come in. Like anxiety, everybody got anxiety. Like it's just how it's, you know how you handle it, right? It's how you you know you're able to kind of control some of the things that you can control, and the stuff that's out of your control is why you have a support system. Um, so we 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 try to do it to where you know we haven't had any any men issues so far because they'll come and talk to you. You know, like the young ladies are ready to talk to a friend, you know, but the men will come to your office and, and look you in your face and tell you exactly what what's wrong, and you just got to find a solution for them. Um, cause they probably didn't ex exhausted everything. So you got to find a solution for them, but we did a pretty good job, man, with the athletic training staff and the university of in the nurses at the university would, would getting our kids any, any time they need to the help, no matter the time of the day, 
um, the help that they need. Cause they'll call you at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> they will call you at three o'clock in the morning. My phone is on, is not on do not disturb. So they know they can get in touch with me. Okay. Okay. So that, I mean, that, that, that's great to hear because I said that that's one of the things that I've heard a lot about over the last few years. Um, it has become to me a phenomenon. Um, and, and, it, and it's heartbreaking. I mean, I, you know, um, I'm not going to divulge my age, but I'm an old guy. And so it kind of breaks my heart every time I hear about a young person dying. Yeah. And, and or, you know, trying to to die um, because to me, they don't know. Well, as my as my pastor would say. They are trying to apply a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Right. And so, um, you know. But, but like I said, I, I, I'm encouraged every time I hear about programs that have um, certain uh, assistance in place to help those athletes because, you know, much like you said, you know, that wasn't it. That, that really wasn't the issue just a few years right. ago. <laughs> so, um, so tell us more about your assistant coaches. So Coach Lex is he's our young coach, man. She uh she's spicy. <laughs> she's spicy. Um she coach jumps, uh throws. She's pretty much the field event coach. This is her second, third year coaching in college. Um this her first year, first full year with me. Um she's doing really well. Um that throughout the throughout picking up what how I coach, she did really well picking up on how I coach. So I'm not, when I came in, the coaches I had was old school coaches that I was assistant with first. And they wasn't a whole your hand type of coaches. So you had to get in quick, figure it out quick, make your own adjustments, make your own, everything was your own. And when she came in, listen, I'm not holding your hand. Make, make your mistakes, because you're going to make them. Let's get them out of the way early. Make your mistakes. Let's correct them. Make more mistakes. Let's correct them so that two, three, four, five track meets down the line. You already know what to look for, what to do, you know, the cues, you know, the conversations, you know, the kids. So that was that was the biggest thing for her this season, just figuring out your kids. I think she'd be phenomenal this season because now you know your kids. And she was actually in on the recruiting process with the, the group we have coming in. So now you already have a relationship with this group of kids. Like she kind of came in, how I came in last year, like, who is this person? <laughs> like, like, who is this person? You know, and, and it does take a while for kids to get adjusted to you when I've done it this way. And I try to tell her, you know, you just got to slowly feed them. Like, when you want to change a jump program, like, to the way you want to see it, you have to slowly feed it. Um, and I think she did a real good job this year, slowly feeding them, right? And eventually, Towards the end of the year, now this is the program how you want to see it. So now the second year, you full force with your program, and the kids know the cues, they know the workouts, they know the warm ups. Um, so she she did really well, man. So she be back, um, ordering all our gear. That's what she like to do. So I guess she like gear, uh, spending all my my little money. Um, but nah, she she good, man. And I think she'd be a phenomenal head coach if that's what the you know she decides to do. Um, she learning that Google Drive. She learning that Google Drive, uh, so she's pretty cool. Um, Coach Brandon is I've known this guy for like since 1997. Um, we went through high school together. We started the summer program together. He is my my daughter uh, godfather. So me and the guy have been together for a minute. Um, he was with me at Carr, um, and now he's with me at Dillard. He coaches hurdles um, in the mid distance. I don't know why he liked the mid distance, but he liked. He like it. <laughs> um, he likes it. So that's what we let him do. And he coaches the hurdles. And uh, he, he spent a lot of my money this year on these hurdles, hurdlers. Um, so, you know, but now nah, I, I think we have a real good staff. Um, I'm dying to, in the fall, now that we have the master's program, to be able to get some graduate assistance um, in one to save some money, right, from the university. 
and it'll get me more scholarships. Um, so that that's my push now that we have this master program starting in fall of 2023. But now we have a pretty solid staff, man. Um, I'm not a hold your hand coach. Um, I don't intervene, right? Like the only time you have an intervene is when an athlete comes to you. Um, I like my coaches. One, they're your kids. They're not my kids, right? They're your kids. These are kids. I don't see them. You see them all day. You communicate with them all day. I communicate with my group all day. So you have to be able to, you know, take control over whatever is happening in your group. And that's just how how I am. Um, like they come to me for advice and tips and stuff like that, which is fine. But I'm not coming in and intervene and, you know, save the day. Um, because like, like I, I was again a PE teacher for eight years and I and I watch a lot of younger teachers and what happens is you lose control of your classroom and if someone else come in and reset your classroom when they leave it's going to be the same issue that you had before they came in you know so I kind of let them control the whole narrative and I control the narrative over the whole team so that's just how we operate man we let the kids be the kids um nobody has to be anybody other than who they are um i want you to be who you are not when your mama's standing by you and you okay. be and you man listen you be shocked man when them, when them parents leave man when them, them kids become themselves and that's who i want to see all the time I, like you're going through stuff i still you you came here smiling like, don't forget, you came to me smiling when I first recruited you. I need you to continue to smile. So we let them be themselves, man, and, and have fun, man. We have fun, man. We have kickball games that we do against blue and white. Um, <laughs> we have fun, man. We, we, we do. We have scavenger hunts, you know, because at the end of it, it is a family. It's business, but it is a family portion of it, right? So that that's what we try to do, man. We try to have you know, so much fun, man. So when they leave, they they can say, I did a lot of winning, but man, we had some fun and I still talk to so and so and it's 20 years later. That that's that's my whole my whole purpose of it, man. The winning is fine, yeah, it's fun. But if we had a losing season and my kids had like a phenomenal time throughout the season, I'm perfectly fine with that. Okay. So how many uh athletes do you have on each of your teams? Last season, I had about 44. I have about 52 now, 51, 51, okay. 51. And that's that's divided almost straight down to the T uh, with the men and women. Um, and we have a couple of kids that, that we're working on um, for the halfway point. And hopefully they come in and compete. Well, one of the guys, uh, I'm not going to say his name because I don't want coaches going after him. But he's coming in uh, in January, man. He's a 6'9 high jump. He was a Juke All American, and this kid can come in. And he he's dynamic, and and I like to recruit kids that can do everything. But Coach Lex sold me on a kid. He only high jumps. <laughs> like he only high jumps. I was like, this is this kid better come in and go crazy. You know, that's all he does. But I, I think we'll be fine, man. That's the area of uh, you know that that we're trying to get right, and I think Chris should do better this year. But Chris having a training partner to help him. Um, so yeah, that's that's where we at, man. We just having fun and competing. That's it. That's all. That's that's all. If you ever come down and you come to practice, that's all you're gonna hear. You gonna hear Coach scream at the kid. Why you not smiling? Like, what are you mad about? Like, like you know how many people want to run collegiate track and field? Like, there's a lot of kids that want to, and they don't care the level. They just want a shot. Like, I get those emails all day. Just give me a shot. Smile smile or go home and come back tomorrow with a smile like is that simple yeah okay well since you've mentioned this quite a few times um uh, talk more about the academic programs there at Dillard. yeah so we have a really good nursing program um and now that i've been in it i'm starting to realize we have a really good public health program um because they have different sectors in it that that you can go into um and a lot of our kids are going to that that sector and they're like a lot of them doing chiropractic stuff like a lot of stuff like that and the great part about it is we do not have study hall on my track team i don't believe in study hall i believe in it but here's why we don't do it 
So remember that 5 a.m. practice we talked about earlier? That's my last time seeing you. We are done at 7 o'clock. So it's no excuses for you to miss class, for you not to be able to get to the library, for you not to, you have a study date or whatever the case is. You have more than enough time. Now you have 22 hours in a day to get your academics together. Um, and since I've been here last 2021 fall, we got the men and women cross country all American team award, men and women. So that's when the entire team is over 3.0. The men got it the following season. And this year, the men and women cross what well, 2021. There we go. 2021 fall, the men and women got it. And then we both teams are over 3.0 for the spring. So again, you have, I recruit the kids that don't need the handheld. Um, and and my like I gotta tell the kids, we're not saying you can't go to the Olympics from an NAIA because you can. But, but our end goal is 100% gradu graduation. That is it. That like I only graduated three seniors, but that's 100%. <laughs> so, so that's that's my whole thing. We're trying to make sure every senior goes and they leave out of here with that piece of paper that means something to them. And now that we have the graduate program, hopefully, you know, we'll get some of those kids to come back and do those extra two years and get up out of there. Yeah, it, it's big. Um, the university is an academic school. It's not a sports school. So that they don't care what you're doing on the athletic side. Like if your kid, they will send an email that say congratulations on the track meet coach, but, right, these two kids, and I like that. Like, you know, I like that because most of the time you get that, that stereotype of dumb jock. That is the dumbest thing ever. Um because these kids are student athletes. Like we have, I can say we have kids that are student athletes and they actually take their academic serious. One, because whenever I see you, I'm going to tell you, take out your canvas. The canvas at Dillard is where all your grades are. And they know at any given moment, coach can say, take out that canvas. And if it's not what I want to see, I'm going to tell you, I don't want to see you at practice. Like I'll see you when this grade is here and them kids be highly upset with me. Like, but that like track is important important to me it shouldn't be important to you right academics should be first and then track makes sense with everything like i'm the only person that needs to be worried about track now you take care of your school side of it man we're gonna have a great relationship like you'll never hear my mouth fussing at you about anything but they a lot of the kids man they pick it up and like you get new kids they go ask the old kids and they'll quickly tell you he will suspend you like i i've had kids i've traveled and you're not running. You're going to study hard doing the tracking. And they sitting at the top of the beaches with books out. And this is what it is. Like, you know, you got it. You have you here, so you might as well get it while you're here. Don't waste your four years. Or however many years, you know, you're going to be at the university. Don't waste it. I'm glad you can do that because I, I tried that on the high school level. Mm -hmm. uh, because my stand, I always had high standards. You know, my my first head coaching job in track and field was middle school, right? And uh, and I was a high school assistant, and uh, and so for my middle schoolers, the standard was you had to you had to you had to have at least a C in all your classes. Mm -hmm. if, if you have anything less than that, you need to stay at home. And get, yep. your, and get those grades up. And yep. so I had a lot of great students on the middle school side. When I got high school, uh, my last high school job, excuse me, I tried the same thing, you know, told the kids, if you have a D, and I did have study hall, but I told the kids, um, if you have a D, you need to be at home studying. I was told I couldn't do that. Hmm. Oh, they 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 allowed to they uh, according to state rules and this that and the other they're allowed to fail at least two classes. Well, if they fail and why they why they out there? You know where where does the care about the kids' academics come in? Because if you fail in two classes. You probably are not as talented as you are 
you're probably not going to be able to compete on the collegiate level. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah. there's, a, there's a disconnect. And, 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 and it's funny, too, that you mentioned about academics there at Diller, which I, I will give Diller kudos. I have given Diller's kudos um, um, to several HBCUs. Um, Diller's online program, I think, is the best. Their, their online um, offering and campus is the best I've seen. It's To me, that's the gold standard. Um, and I've suggested um, that a few HBCUs model themselves after what Diller does. But, um, you know, it's funny because I, I used to be an, an NAIA assistant uh, commissioner for a conference. Mm -hmm. And one of my ADs kind of explained some things to me. And it was that, uh, you know, around, I think it was over 50% of the student body were athletes at that particular school hmm. at that particular institution so we're bringing in money we're because and because that school costs so much and you can only offer you know a certain amount of money we're contributing directly to, to the to the resources of the school right so you know uh i don't know how Overall, Diller's academics, uh, uh, I'm sorry, student body percentage is in, in accordance with athletics. But, you know, that, that was an eye opener for me. And, and I know, talked to a, a few other people, they weren't um, really in tune to the role that you coaches play as far as recruiting for not just your program before the institution right and that you're actually contributing and giving these teachers or, or instructors the students that they that they have and, and 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 that's been you know personally that's been a bone with me with a, a few institutions uh i've had to tell some uh professors who do not like at, uh, athletics you don't go out and recruit any of these students. These students don't know who you are. So they're not coming here due to your teaching reputation. Right. Just think about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but, um, well, I do need to go ahead and wrap this up. And this has been a joy to talk to you. And uh, definitely want want to talk to you um, uh, some more, you know, even offline. And uh, it's very impressive what you're doing there with your program. And once again, I do want to give you kudos and congratulate you on your accomplishments this year. Um, before we before we go, um, this is your time to give some shout out. So, who would you like to shout out, Coach? It is anyway. Oh man, my my Dylan Athletics coaching staff, man. Oh, uh, Coach Ron, Coach Martin, Coach Spurgeon, my Coach Lex. You know, Coach Manoski, Coach Grant. Um, you know, man, these are these are people that I, I watch work hard, man. And and a few of them was there before me. Um, so I definitely appreciate the Dylan Athletics staff. Dr. Barnes, man, she's no longer at Dylan, but she's. I mean, if, if it wasn't her, I wouldn't be right here. So. She gave me an opportunity, man, when I got so many no's, <laughs> you know. Um, and she believed in, in the vision, man, and she let me go. And, and my, my whole point was to reward her with as many championships as I could before she left. And we gave her four this season. So, you know, hopefully she's happy with that, man. You know, we got to order the rings and get her rings. But, you know, definitely shout out to Dr. Barnes, man. You know, she, I mean, I'm here, you know. Dr. Kimbrough, uh, the president of, of the university, man, he, he definitely was a, a, a big part of supporting the track and field. He does it for all the athletics, but, you know, he, he definitely kept the public, you know, on notice of what we was doing, man. Anything we did, he was there. He came to, to the conference taking pictures. <laughs> like, you know, who, who has their president out there laying on the ground taking pictures, man. So that, that's pretty cool to see, man. And, you know, shout out to my wife and my kids, man. And, and any kid I ever came across and touched and coached, man. You know, I appreciate all y'all making me a better coach. 
And I appreciate you, Mr. Lacey, you know, for giving me this opportunity, man, to, to tell my journey and, and get Dillard a little bit more noticed out there in the country, man. Because not everybody know us, but we coming. Okay, well, it, it's, it's definitely my pleasure, Coach. And I do want to give a shout out to uh, your SID, Joe Crisco. My man, Joe, all man. This up. <laughs> <laughs> my man Joe, man Joe's a hardworking man. Joe was uh SID of the year, man. Like okay. he did his thing this year, man. He he he's a one man wrecking crew. <laughs> they gotta give my guy okay. some help, man. Joe be working, man. He he's probably at the office now working. He be working. <laughs> Shout out to my man Joe. <laughs> well, I de definitely uh got to give him his kudos because he because he uh you know even besides. I'm setting this up, you know, he did some other things that required a lot of work uh, uh, for me. And so, uh, you know, I said, want to give him, uh, um, you know, hey, good job, Joe. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for setting this interview up. And like I said, I, I really enjoyed it. And I'm definitely going to be back in touch with you. And I have a feeling that we'll be contacting you uh, quite a bit in the future as long as we're doing this series. Yeah, man. That, hey, that's the plan. <laughs> if I'm if I'm talking to you, that means I'm doing something right, man. So that's definitely the plan. That's definitely the plan. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Coach, for taking out the time to talk to us. And uh, we do wish you all the best for the future. And we hope that you are able to attain those uh, th those goals that you have for uh, the national championship. Now, I appreciate you. All right. You have yeah, a blessed day. Yeah. Right, you too.